Devil May Cry 4 is over a decade old now. I hate this. I hate this so much. When it comes to this game, there are two camps. Those who really like it, and those who have bad taste in video games. I kid, but yeah. DMC4 is a bit of an oddball for a lot of people, and to an extent, I do get why. On one hand, 4 does a lot to improve on and advance the series from the third entry, but on the other hand, some really questionable game design holds it back from being a truly better game than Dante's Awakening. And that's a shame because there's a lot of really good quality of life improvements here. For one, you can actually switch combat styles on the fly this time. Just by pressing one of the D-pad buttons, BAM! Go directly from Trickster to Swordmaster to Gunslinger or to Royal Guard just like that. You don't have to do any monotonous goddess statue bullshit anymore. With that restriction being thrown out, it does so much to expand on what cool stuff you're able to pull off. While you don't have quite as many weapons as last time, the ones you are given are utilized so well that you'll hardly find that an issue at all. If you've ever wanted to use a weapon that transforms into a Gatling gun, laser cannon, about 50 different types of rocket launcher, and whatever the hell this hovercraft monstrosity is supposed to be, then DMC4 is the video game for you. Well, the second half of the game at least. The reason DMC4 was so polarizing comes in right about... here. This boy is Nero. He's the new guy. Being the son of Virgil and some unknown mother who apparently hated him so much that she named him after one of the most ruthless and insane emperors from the Roman Empire. I don't know who Virgil had sex with, but I guess that's just one of life's biggest mysteries. Such as what it's like after death, or how the most viewed video on YouTube is freaking Despacito. I don't even hate Despacito, just... Why that song? Nero pretty much embodies all the complaints people had with 4. Not even because of how he plays, far from it. He's a total blast to play for essentially being a bit of a fusion of all of Dante styles. Also, Devil Breaker. If you don't like Devil Breaker, we can't be friends, I'm sorry. Honestly, I love playing as Nero more than Dante, which is not something I'd say lightly. It seems like all of that is fine and dandy for most people, but the backlash comes from how Nero's integrated into the plot. Essentially, he's the Raiden of Devil May Cry, taking the spot of main protagonist while the guy everyone recognizes and loves is more of a secondary hero with significantly less screen time. Personally, I'm that one person who actually likes Raiden more than Snake, and I subsequently ended up really liking Nero's character. Though, not more than Dante, I may be an idiot, but I'm not stupid. Nero's a bit of a punk who shouts a lot, but he's a good boy who's had a long, rough day. Don't be mean. I don't think his character is the problem, it's just how much he's in the game. It's pretty clear that most of the focus went to Nero since not only does he have more total missions than Dante, but it seems like most of the plot happens from his perspective. There's all this stuff involving the Vatican secretly tampering with demonic power, the Pope getting shot and coming back from the dead, and this giant statue which Sanctus the evil Pope guy is trying to use to destroy the world. However, the plot loses a lot of its momentum when you take control of Dante. He goes all the way back to the first part of the game where not much really happens until you get there. It causes the game's pacing to take a massive hit, especially since Dante is relegated to just playing the game again in reverse. Trekking all the way from where you currently are back to the starting point, because that's good game design. I like most of the bosses, but having to fight a good portion of them two or three times with little to no difference can get pretty tiring. And it doesn't exactly help that a lot of these bosses were clearly designed with Nero's playstyle in mind more than Dante's. The moments when the bosses get stunned are your opportunity to use Nero's Devil Breaker to do massive damage. But with Dante, all you can really do is attack normally with the same damage output, which isn't anywhere near as satisfying as using Devil Breaker. Dante's gameplay is great, the best it ever was at that point, but it's just wasted on lackluster mission and boss design where Nero shines so much more in that regard. The only original boss that Dante has is the Savior, and that boss is a load of shit. At this point, it's pretty much common knowledge that DMC4 was never properly finished, and yeah, it shows really badly. In the special edition re-release of the game in 2015, they added new playable stories with Virgil expanding on his gameplay from 3, and another one with both Trish and Lady. It's a cool little addition, but if you are going to play these characters after Nero and Dante's story, wait a while because playing DMC4 multiple times one after the other will get really damn exhausting. I don't really get the reason for making separate stories for these characters when they're really just the same missions throughout the entire game. At that point, just put in a character select screen so I don't have to fight the same bosses so many times, then I'll have memorized every minute little insignificant detail about them. I know I've spent like half this segment criticizing DMC4, but honestly, I love this game even with how much it stumbles. It's a case where the game gets a lot wrong, but it gets so many more things right. 
the combats were fine and fun enough to distract me from the less than stellar mission design. While Dante does kinda get shafted in favor of Nero, all of his scenes are fucking golden. The Lucifer cutscene is just one dick joke after another, and it makes 22 year old me lose my shit as if I'm still in middle school. Also, I friggin' dare you to talk shit about that one bit where Dante theatrically roasts one of the main villains. I'm not sure how people feel about Nero and DMC4 nowadays compared to 10 years ago, but if you can accept the fact that this game at its core is pretty much Nero's story featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series, there's a lot to like here. I'd like to think of DMC4 being for Nero what DMC3 is for Dante, that being the beginning chapter of their path to becoming a hero, going from a gives-no-shits teenager hiding himself from the world, into somebody who displays his demonic power front and center, ultimately using it to stop Sanctus and save the world. There's sort of a student-teacher dynamic between him and Dante which I really like. Nothing says bonding with your uncle quite like trying to kill him at first, only to eventually work together with him to destroy a giant statue. So yeah this game. It's flawed, but still pretty darn special in my eyes, and I love it all the same. I guess I'd classify DMC4 as one of those things that I do unironically like, but if I was in a conversation with the right person, I could probably spend a while just picking apart all the problems I have with it. It probably would have been the best game in the series for the time if they actually finished it, but for what it is, the game's still really good. At the very least, it laid out the blueprint for a theoretically perfect Devil May Cry game. Too bad the game that followed gave a giant middle finger to all that. DMC Devil May Cry is a video game. I don't think it's terrible, but more than anything, I'm just perplexed by the fact that this game is even real. Someone out there thought this is what fans and the gaming scene at large wanted. This. Apparently someone at Capcom was so out of touch that they thought taking all of a series established story and gameplay, chucking it out the window, and replacing it with something barely recognizable was gonna sit well with everyone. I don't even hate or dislike the reboot. I had fun playing it, but god this game is so fucking stupid. The story is pretty much the single worst thing ever. I don't know whose idea it was to reimagine a character like Dante into some vulgar chipmunk looking doofus, but somebody else should have told that person that their idea was really dumb. Charm? Charisma? Actual legitimate character growth? Bah, who needs that? Let's turn him into an unlikable, selfish, psychotic monster with paper-thin reasons and motivations for doing literally anything. Oh, and let's drop in a bunch of gratuitous profanity because that makes him cool. I feel like I'm describing one of my older videos. If I'm being honest, I don't even think new Dante being an asshole is the problem. I feel like they don't go far enough with him being an asshole. If they made new Dante like Travis Touchdown, who's so obviously a complete loser trying to be cool, or Trevor Phillips, who's so over-the-top psychotic that he's practically a cartoon character, new Dante may have actually worked for me. Instead, he's too unlikable for me to root for, yet not unlikable enough for me to find him entertaining. He's supposed to start off as a scumbag and eventually grow from that and start caring about humanity, but his motivations basically stem from just one girl who he really likes for some reason. The love interest slash friend slash whatever cat is more bland than a dinner of white bread and tap water that you eat while listening to Maroon 5 and watching the latest movie from Illumination Studios. These two have all the chemistry of Benedict Arnold in 18th century America. It doesn't help that Cat does nothing other than opening portals between the human and demon worlds using squirrel semen. I really wish I was making up that last part. She also gets kidnapped. And that's it. I mean, to be fair, at least she's not Virgil. You know that person who watched V for Vendetta one time and now considers themselves an anarchist bent on tearing down and rebuilding established society? When in reality, they're just wasting away in a better chair saying stupid shit on social media? DMC Virgil is basically the physical manifestation of that person's wet dream. He's arrogant, pretentious, and in general just lacks any positive qualities. You're stuck dealing with this punchable asswipe throughout the entire story, which made me absolutely joyous when he gave one of the villains an abortion via gunshot before blowing her brains out, I wish I was making that up. The game also decided to make him the final boss at the last minute, all because he forgot to mention beforehand that he had plans for taking over the world. And Dante now cares about humans being free for some reason. It's kinda sad that I like the villains in this game more than any of the protagonists. Especially since even Mundus, or Mundus now for some reason, got downgraded from some evil statue demon lord guy to some lame businessman who throws a tantrum every time Dante does anything. Honestly, my favorite character in the game is Bob Barbus, mostly because of how cartoonishly smarmy he is. He's a total dick and relishes in it, which is honestly something that the game should have had more of. 
The whole story feels like it's trying to be a critique of capitalism or something, but it's executed in such a basic and uninteresting way that's honestly just really pretentious. Pretty much all the game has to say is corporations sell you unhealthy soda from a bootleg slurm queen, and the news media lies and sensationalizes shit because our world is secretly run by demons. And apparently the solution to the problem is destroying all of society and probably killing countless people to expose the evil demons who weren't even really doing anything that bad. On screen at least. Might also just be me, but I can't really take this whole corporations are evil thing seriously from a game that pretty much disregarded an entire series of beloved games, lore, and characters. Because studio heads and focus groups dictated that this game would have been far more successful on the market than making an actual Devil May Cry 5. Which, yeah, that didn't exactly go too well. And really, the whole thing takes itself way too seriously and doesn't even attempt to have fun. It's all just constant melodrama without any of the humorous or charming moments from the past games. I'd like to say, while the story sucks, the gameplay is really good, but even that's hard for me to really say. The combat is a huge step back from the series compared to 3 and 4, and it comes with a number of really clunky design decisions of its own. The core hack and slash gameplay is fine, it's responsive, satisfying to attack enemies, and has a decent amount of combos you can buy and unlock, just like past games. The game also gives you these demonic hook things that you can use to pull enemies toward you, or pull yourself toward the enemies. It's actually pretty fun, and it leads to you utilizing different strategies with how you choose to fight. They also get used for a lot of the game's platforming segments, which are basic, but a nice way to break up the monotony a bit. But then there's... everything else. For one, the whole style system is completely axed, so right off the bat it feels so much more basic than past games. You can still do a number of moves from the fighting styles, but it's implemented so haphazardly that it feels like a watered-down version of the styles that tries to do too much at a time. But it gets really annoying having to hold down L2 or R2 to use one of them in combat. You could literally just have the button switch back and forth between those four weapons and Rebellion. Or hell, the D-pad because it's not used for switching styles anymore. That's another thing. A lot of familiar actions in past games are remapped for some reason, and it plays a big role into why the combat feels so alienating for Devil May Cry. It took until the re-release for them to add a lock-on system in, which always annoyed me because dodging was mapped to two different buttons when one would have done just fine. The worst thing is that someone thought it'd be a good idea to map Devil Trigger to clicking both analog sticks simultaneously instead of pressing a single button. Not that it really matters, I guess, because the Devil Trigger is awful anyways. It raises all the enemies into the air, so attacking them is just a pain. All it's really good for is recovering a bit of health. Though to give them credit, it's very clever of them to design Dante with white hair and a red trench coat during Devil Trigger. Never seen him look like that before. The game at least looks stylistically interesting, even if it's super heavy on orange and blue, the most basic and overused complementary color scheme ever. But strip that away and you'll notice a lot of technical faults that come from the game being made with Unreal Engine over MT Framework which was used for the previous games. A lot of the animation is subpar, there's some pretty notable pop-in, it takes a while to load, and the game initially ran at 30 frames per second. Even in the remaster, all issues but that last one are still present. There's not really anything in this game that wasn't done better in past titles. Aside from platforming that actually functions and a fully rotatable camera, the only thing it has over 4 is that the game was actually finished. That's it. This whole game feels like a step back, and aside from the first game, I feel like it's the title that time is gonna be the least kind to. There's a lot more I could rip into, like how badly the bosses suck, the fact that mission ranks are often dependent on these arbitrary pickups, and how Virgil's Downfall is the worst DLC ever made by humans, but I feel like I've gone on long enough. I'm not gonna outright recommend DMC, but if you want to give it a try, go for the remaster. Playing with 60 frames per second in lock-on is a night and day difference from the original release. I also smashed this game with the sledgehammer because I guess I wanted to thematically tie it in with the DMC2 segment or something. I don't dislike the game enough to use the PS4 version, so I just went with the crappy vanilla version. At this point, any feelings of animosity toward the reboot would just be wasted energy. It feels like beating a dead horse. Not even that, it's like beating the spot where a horse's dead carcass used to be before decomposing into a pile of dirt and a few bones. Everyone involved with making DMC has clearly moved on, so we should all probably do the same. For a while, I was just about ready to come to terms with the fact that Devil May Cry was probably dead for good. 
DMC3 would forever be the greatest hype the series ever reached, the last thing to come out of the franchise would be the spiritual successor to Shadow the Hedgehog, and Nero would never see Dante again. Then, E3 2018 rolled around, and the hype train began with that sweet-ass trailer. Nero fighting with the robot appendage, Nero looking like white-haired Ryuji, some new mechanic lady, Devil Trigger, the greatest battle theme for any game ever composed, friggin' Boomer Dante on a motorcycle, there was quite a bit for me to take in at the time. We had to wait until March the following year, but honestly, I was just happy that DMC was alive and coming back full swing. It may have taken a while, but damn was it worth the wait. I should probably get my negatives out of the way real quick, though. Dante's battle theme in this game is kind of ass. I can't really think of much I dislike about this game, if anything at all. I know there was the whole controversy with you being able to purchase orbs via microtransaction, but you get so many orbs in-game that it's pretty negligible. This game just nails everything so well. Story, presentation, gameplay, it's all amazing. It took me a while of thinking about it for myself, but DMC5 is hands down the best game in the series. It feels like they finally managed to create the game DMC4 sadly never got to be, while adding so much more to it. The RE engine that Capcom also used for Resi 7 and the remake of 2 did wonders for DMC5. Everything looks super detailed and polished, with the game running smooth as hell, even on my basic-ass vanilla PS4. I wasn't quite sure what to think of the art direction during the first reveal, with it seeming to be less colorful and more gray, but don't worry, it more than grew on me. The environmental design is easily the most imaginative and dynamic the series has ever seen thus far, helped by the amazing work done with the lighting, particle, and fluid effects. At times, you can see the characters get coated in blood, which is both kinda gross and damn impressive work. I just love all the extra tiny details that games in the RE engine thus far have been given, and DMC5 is no exception. Blah blah blah, good graphics, yeah yeah yeah. This is a game, so time for gameplay. I'm just gonna say that Devil May Cry has never before played as good as it does here. I've seen some people claim that it feels slower than 4, but playing both games back to back, I never really noticed much of a difference, if any. Coming from 4 on over to 5, you should feel perfectly at home playing as both Dante and Nero. There's also a new guy, but I'm gonna get the familiar Devil Boys out of the way real quick. Nero plays basically the same way as how he did in the fourth game, though this time he's only got one arm because some dude decided to cut it off. So Mechanic Lady Nico creates these new mechanical Devil Breakers. They function like how Nero's original Devil Breaker worked before he joined the Lost Arm Club with Anakin Skywalker, Raiden from Metal Gear, and a bunch of poor little saps from MCU Phase 2 though the mechanical Devil Breakers have their own unique functionalities in combat. Nero always did feel like he was missing something in DMC4, and I definitely say that the new Devil Breakers filled that void effortlessly. They give you a whole new range of fighting options along with a strategic way of using them. You can either use them as intended, or just straight up destroy the Breaker when pulling off a super move or being surrounded. You can hold a fair amount of them in your inventory, starting off at 3 slots but being able to upgrade to 8. They can either be purchased from Nico in the shop, or found lying around the environment, so it's not too big a hassle to replace your arsenal if all your Devil Breakers bite the dust. I don't want to give too much away about Dante, because a few additions to his moveset are a bit spoilery, and I don't want to spoil a game that's not even half a year old yet. But all the super cool shit that you could do with Dante in past games, you can absolutely still do in Devil May Cry 5. The style switching from 4 makes a return, along with a few new kick-ass weapons. I've got to give special mention to what may very well be my new favorite devil arm in the series, the Cavalier. I never knew I needed a motorcycle that transforms into dual-wheeled buzzsaws in my life, but this game showed me that I, in fact, did. Thanks, DMC5! Also, this game's nunchuck weapon called King Cerberus functions similarly to how OG Cerberus did in DMC3, but this time it also uses fire and electric-based attacks in addition to ice. This thing makes me so fucking wet. Dante is definitely the gameplay style that has the most to him, which I suppose makes sense considering he's an amalgamation of pretty much everything that he ever was able to do over the course of four prior games. The third playable character is some new Kylo Ren lookalike named V. If you've ever wanted to earn an SSS rank in combat while not knowing what the hell you're even doing, then V is the playable character for you. Unlike Dante and Nero, V's combat style isn't exactly about attacking enemies directly, but instead you summon some other demons to do the dirty work for you. Shadow does all of the melee combo stuff, Griffin is more ranged attack based, and Nightmare is essentially your devil trigger. V's combat consists of you using your summoned familiars to get the enemies to a weak enough state where you're able to finish them off. 
They'll drain the enemy's health and stun them, but V himself is the one who has to get up close and do the final killing blow. It took me a bit to really get into V's playstyle due to it being much slower and more strategic than the other two, but a couple missions in, I got the hang of it just fine. For the first time, all the playable characters are given their own content, their own good content. Yeah, this time around, every playable character gets equal treatment. None of it feels half-hearted. All three protagonists are given unique missions and boss fights that are not only different from all the others, but feel specifically tailor-made to accommodate for how the character in question plays. Some of the missions do allow you to pick between two or even all three of the protagonists, which is a nice feature that gives you all the more of an incentive to play a mission again. A lot of the items you could buy in past games are no longer sold in the shops now. Now more than ever, DMC expects you to fight well. No vital stars, no devil stars, no holy water. Basically, get good. It's not an easy game at all, but once you get into it, you'll be fine. I won't dive too deep into the story since, again, new game, some people might not have gotten around to playing it quite yet, and I do care about my audience for as small as it is, and probably will be forever, but I'll just say, it is really, really good. It's a heartfelt love letter to fans with some of the best and most impactful character moments I've seen in recent memory. The old characters are just as good as they ever were, and the new ones are very welcome additions to the cast. A ton of other little things help make DMC5 that much more impressive. The dynamic battle music that changes depending on combat rank, a function that points you to where you need to go if you get lost or need to differentiate the main route from the side content, characters fighting in the background of some missions actually being controlled by other players, it's just so good. I know it took over a decade for this game to even come into creation, but it was so worth it. I'd say the wait led to the game being even better than it would have been had it come out even two or three years sooner. The advancements in technology really did this game one hell of a huge favor. Not exactly sure where the series will go from here, but I'm just so happy to have this game exist. It feels almost unreal. The series is in a good spot now. DMC5 sold really well, got critical acclaim, and is being welcomed with warm arms by pretty much everyone. For now, that's enough. It's so good to have these Devil Boys back in action. Let's hope they hit the jackpot again with their future endeavors.